Perez. Walter makes a run ahead of it. Burkamp suddenly changed pace through the centre. It's Burkamp! That's magnificent! The move, and then this, which left Dabby's ass totally stranded. Hello, dear viewer and listener, and those of you doing neither, and welcome to a Burkhat Wonderland on this this Easter Sunday. It is for me, and I have got a, um, what is Sean getting me? A Bailey's. Irish cream Easter egg, and I've eaten half of it because I'm a piggy. And her mum got me a box of 10 Cadbury's cream eggs. I'm on a diet. <sighs> I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Do you celebrate? Uh, with me is the wonderful Mike Hurts from Not Another Arsenal podcast. Do you celebrate Easter over there, young man? Yes, uh, the family yeah. loves Easter, as a matter of fact. My mother in law is very big on it. So every single Easter Sunday, we are together doing the egg hunt, making sure he we said egg together. hunt. There, people don't get the wrong idea. It wasn't a slip of the tongue. Sounds he isn't so calling close. me an egg-headed something. But yeah, we do it up big. Yeah, big plans for tomorrow. A lot of barbecue and a lot of fun every single Sunday, man. So big. I don't really quite get what's the big commotion about, um, Danny. When, when it comes to Easter, I, I, all that, all this kind of a, all this holiday cheer goes right over my head. But nonetheless, I participate. I have forty-nine kids plus the wife. Yeah, as you know, that's a lot of egg. A lot of eggs. Yeah. So um, how, how have you been? I haven't spoken to you for a few weeks. There has been a, a few cancelled ABW podcasts. I was meant to have done one with the lads from Barnet FC because we all love a bit of Barnet FC. But they let me down at the last minute, which is OK, because I'd been out all day. And uh, yeah, so there's been a few cancelled. Have you been up to anything apart from having yourselves uh, some branded mugs? Now that you're in the big time. <laughs> Brandon Muggs, those are a staple for uh, not another Arsenal podcast. We have done sweet fuck all, Danny. Um, oh. I'm going to tell you, there our, our podcast isn't exactly set up to for the daily newsreel, if you will. And yes. you will be hard pressed finding me watching an international game of football outside of the World Cup. And even then, I'll tune in in like the last eight. Not a huge fan of it. It disrupts the season, like. Based on the form that we were in, eight straight wins, the last thing I wanted to do was take two full weeks off to, to play Manchester City. So that kind of sucked. Yeah. But unfortunately, that's just how it played out. So as far as the podcast go, I have done absolutely nothing. As far as my personal life goes, Danny, you know me. All I do is work, work, sleep, work, sleep, play with the little ones, sleep some more. That's all I do. Lay low, Danny. That's my That's my go-to. Lay low. Don't get in trouble. Need to get a little swines down the mines, get them digging cobalt for you or something, make them pay for themselves. And they're then gonna, uh, they're going to pay off sooner then, rather and, than later. And then it, then all will be good. Right. Um, really, the game we're going to talk about is uh, oh, Man City v Arsenal. Here we go. My usual bullshit of stats and facts that no one gives a shit about. First of all, <laughs> the game. It's uh, Manchester City v Arsenal. Nice. The competition. Premier League. Also nice. Uh, the date, uh, Sunday the 31st of March at 4.30pm in London. It's 12.30pm for Tom Andrew in Philadelphia. It's 11.30am uh, for Cy in Dallas. It's 9.30am for Stan in Vancouver. It's 3.30am in Sydney. We haven't got anybody for Sydney or Australia yet. If you are, put it in the chat. It is 6.30am for 6.30pm. For Boy 10 Dio in Johannesburg, because our clocks don't go forward until this time tomorrow night, 1 a.m. And it's 10 p.m. in New Delhi, and it's 1.30 a.m. in Tokyo. If you are listening, and you are in a part of the world other than the UK, let me know where you are. Just say, like, you're in, you're in um, I don't know, Sydney, Australia, and, and then I'll get your name. And next time, I might pick your name and add it to the list of when and where things are on. So there you go. That's, that's all the times. And and for you, Mike, what time is kickoff? Well, I was trying to... You, you confused me a little because you said Stan in Canada is 9.30. For me, it's 8.30. And normally, we're on the same time. But maybe they don't have daylight saving times. 
So I don't know, but 8.30 a.m. for me. So I'm going to be up bright and early. I'm going to do go do some work nonsense that I need to take care of. And by the time I get back, I will come back to a household with everybody sleeping. And I'm going to watch the game on my little iPad in a little corner and scream in silence for the full I'm 90 gonna, minutes. I'm going to struggle to be up for 4.30. That's how bad I am. Um... So we say hello to some of the, the lovely people in the chat. There's our very own Phil Macker. He's right. looking a little bit like Morrissey there. Sad times, sad times. Evening, ladies. Three points coming our way. There's you, and there's you again, and then there's Mike. And there's uh, Nitsu Nubi. I don't know. Uh, uh, we are the Arsenal. We are indeed. Um, Englishman in Canada. Evening, everybody. Phil says, the lady I love most in the world bought me a large chocolate egg a week ago, and it's a miracle it still remains unbeaten. Oh, that's lovely. The woman that uh, loves you the most. How about your wife? What did she get you? He ain't got a wife. <laughs> He's not allowed one after he killed the last one. Uh, Nitsu says, Kai Abbott score again. Uh, BX says, good evening, everybody. Did I have BX on my list? Um, no, I haven't got him on my list. I've got Lone Star London in Austin, Texas. I've got Mr. Hertz in San Jose and Graham Denton in Detroit. So I will add new people to the list. 9.30. Oh, no. You could down to there. Uh, Englishman in Canada says, 9.30, start of a game tomorrow. Arsenal, Calgary, Canada. Oh, so I'm going to do the Englishman in Canada. Um, e N G L I S H in Canada, and is in Calgary. C A L G A R Y. There you go. It's another one I've added to my list. And it's just so excited. B X says, Ah, B X is in Charlotte. Okay, uh, B X Ghana, Charlotte. I did know that. I think. Um, Calgary, Canada. Yeah, I've got that one. Uh, Nitsu says, uh, America, lovely. Uh, Miss Molina is there. Hello, uh, good to see you. And Englishman says, Canada changed the times ahead of America for some reason, so we're out of sync for a few weeks. Yeah, ours is tomorrow night. Oh. Uh, that's all the people we got there. I mean, according to the thing, we have uh, do you when you do your shows, do you do them to Twitter at the same time? Yes, I, I try to plug that in. I'm, I'm a personal on Nap. On Have Twitter. you noticed that the counter in the top left hand corner is off its trolley? We had over a thousand people watching on Twitter the other day. We didn't. Yeah, I said... choose to believe that's true. So I'm. <laughs> it right so yeah, big views for me this, uh, as of recent. You know, really spiked up from our average twelve to like two hundred and something. I like it, Danny. I'll take yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Over a thousand for one of ours, and uh, I completely ignore it because it's off its trolley. Um, right, so the next thing we can uh, wh where is it on? What channels are here? Absolutely nobody asking. TNT Sports, which used to be BT Sports, which used to be Santander in, in England. I'm sure it's on BBC Radio 5 or Talk Sport. I couldn't find out which one it was on. Uh, players out injured. Uh, Dewey and Timber, we all know about. And if you heard about the... I've renamed them. We've got Gabriel the Defender, Gabriel the Winger, and uh, Gabriel the Striker. But this one is the Defender, the Winger, and Saka. And a quote from our very own Mr. Arteta. Arteta says, When pressed on whether the trio would be fit for the trip to the Etihad Stadium on Sunday, Mikhail admitted he is leaving it until the last possible moment to make that call. Does that make or break our possibilities of winning? Do you think? I'll be completely honest with you, Danny. I, I well, right, if it may, if it makes or break uh, a as far as their percentage of possibility of winning, yeah, it's it's massive. Saka Martinelli or Gabriel can't start the game. Uh, however, I don't believe that for one second, Danny. To be completely honest, Is he with playing you, mind mean, games, mind games, and even the training pictures that came out that that Arsenal Twitter pu published, no, no Saka. No Gabriel the defender, no Gabriel the winger. And no. I, I'm not convinced that they didn't train Danny. That's what I can tell you. So I think there's a lot of a lot of you know uh mind games going on, a lot of keeping your cards close to yourself. Even a Kenji and Ederson, I believe, are are labeled as like late fitness tests. Again, I'm completely surprised to be honest with you that Pep Guardiola confirmed stones and i don't know what that is that's a half egg i'm sure i'm surprised that pep guardiola confirmed that stones and walker is out i i thought he was going to play the old 
late fitness testing, but maybe he has a little bit too much for respect for Arteta. But as far as our two lovely Brazilians and our starboard Bukayo Saka, I think most likely, man, they, they were doing fine prior to it. I know that Martinelli, realistically, he was just out of the Brazilian squad because of the cut. It's been a few weeks now. I'm pretty sure that cut must be healing up nice. So it's just about a little bit of game fitness. So I, I I think we should see them. Maybe this might be the first time in a very long time that we have nearly a full full strength starting eleven. And I say nearly because depends on how you rate Mister uh, Kivior, of course. I know people. I've known people to recover in that length of time from shark bites. So, and that's when they lose limbs. So, I think it'll be fine. Sai, did you listen to the beginning of the show? If you didn't, go and have a little listen. You might well have been included in the kickoff times. Uh, ninjitsu, no, not ninjitsu, nitsu, newbie says, Do you play George E at six? We're going to come to that a little bit later on. Lone Star, I've got your details down there. Your, I didn't do you in the, uh, the uh, kickoff time things. That barn, it looks like a bird's nest. Not mine. He means yours. And Phil says, our Teta press conferences are a joke these days. Yeah, it doesn't answer anything. Uh, Miss yeah. Molina is saying hello to everybody. No hat in your picture. Uh, you're, I think you're known for your hats, Molina. You always have a very nice um, nice hat. I do like a good hat. We tried to get Mike to wear a hat, but it took three people to get all that hair under the hat, and then the hat just flew off, so he gave up. It's too windy um, in California right now. Uh, so uh, it smells troubles to sigh. So let's have a little look back at uh, how many games do you reckon we have played against Mank Shitty, as I'm going to call them, ever in all competitions? Ever? ever? Well, dude, they spent a lot of times in second division, haven't they? So and some in the third. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that they that Lee, um, ex Arsenal player Paul Dickov scored the goal that got the, I think it won them the third the League One playoff tight uh, final at Wembley and I think he might have scored the goal I'm sure it was him. Um, He's yeah, the best part Paul of that Dickov. name is that I don't know if you're just teasing me or if that's a real name because it has Paul Dickov. Yeah, oh, Scottish. Yeah, he was a youth player at <laughs> Arsenal. Yeah, uh, 80, 80 times is my prediction. Uh, you're close. It's 210. We've won 100. <laughs> oh, it might close. <laughs> they've won 45, and we and we they no, we've won 100. Drew 45, and they've won 65. What year do you reckon the first ever time we played them was? I think I I think I have that one fresh in my memory because you did send me the thing, and I didn't even pay attention to how many games. What was Cheeky. it? The 50s, Danny. Yeah, it was. It was the 50s. It was 1893. Well done for listening. The 11th of November 1893. Woolwich Arsenal won. Ardwick, nil in Division Two because they used to be known as Ardwick. Don't ask me why; I have no idea. Uh, last three games, Mike. Um, have you got a strong drink there? While I read out the last three games against City at their ground, what have you got? What drink? Shoot, just beer, just a, a nice Modelo. You have a little swig of that and try and hold back the tears. The last time we played them at their ground was the twenty sixth of April, twenty twenty three. They smashed us 4-1 in the league. Mm -hmm. Before that, the 27th of January, 2023, they beat us 1-0 in the FA Cup. And the time before that, the 28th of August, 2021, they smashed us 5-0 in the league. We're going to move on from that. Or have you got anything you'd like to say? Other than depression? Nothing. Yeah. Um, no, I'm, I would, I'll say this, Danny, for whatever it's worth. I think context matters. And, and I'm a big believer in, in some people are like, hey, we struggle at this ground 2001, so we're going to struggle 2002. We're going to struggle 2003. I like to believe that every single season is a new opportunity. So the context of the of the club, how the, the club standing is, the context of the squad that we have, the health of the squad, all these play a factor. So personally, I'm not one of those type of people that say, oh, we've lost six. We're definitely going to lose. I'm kind of like, all right, we're fucking we're due. We're due. That's 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 my mentality. But um, I do think that every opportunity is a new opportunity when, when we go and play. And again, like I said a little bit, a little while ago, it's a fit squad in a first time in a very long time. And so I'm really excited to see this because I, I know that being a little hard on Rob Holding and the performance that he had the last time out. But I mean, Gabriel and Saliba. Holland has able to accumulate 0.00 XG the last two times they played. So if we have our two big boys in the back, 
makes me feel considerably more uh, confident, I'll say. Look at that beautiful thing. For people at home on the bus and having a poo, that is the XG difference in the Premier League this season. Arsenal are on about 42, 41. And then Man City are on about 33, Liverpool 32. And the next one down is Aston Villa on about 12 or 13. And that is pretty astounding. And Sheffield United on about minus 35. Uh, So coming up to number of goals is a relevant point for this bit. Uh, Mikel Arteta's uh, record against Man City, played 11, all competitions. He's won three. He's never drawn against them and he's lost eight. And so his record against Pep is exactly the same because he's been manager the whole time. Pep's record against Arsenal for every club he's managed, played 29, won 20, drawn three and lost six. Now, if we have a look at the current form, which is uh, leads on to that XG, Arsenal have played 5-1-5, five, five, scored 23, conceded two. Man City played 5-1-3, drawn two, scored seven compared to our 23 and conceded three compared to our two. I mean, any fool know that you look at them stats and that says at least a 6-0 win for us, doesn't it? It's got to win. Uh, people, while I remember, put your predictions in the chat in case some of you aren't here for the entire show i want you to put man city and then the score and then arsenal because when i read it all out later it makes it a lot easier don't just put three nil if you could so the home team score and then the away team don't put home team and away team you fucking idiots because <laughs> that will annoy me um mike yeah looking at those stats um 23 goals scored in five five or maybe is that six i think that might be in six games it is indeed in six so that would be, uh, I remember now when I was looking at it, so uh, in the last five games, I think that would be 18 in five. Yes, yeah, so I got a little bit carried away. I'll take it. Just tag on the next one. Those, those fives are already taken into account what we're going to score versus City uh, tomorrow. Um, yeah, no, we're, we're doing really good. And, and it's difficult to see City and say they're weak because of how good they are. They always manage to... To get through games but yeah i mean if, if you want to hold on to something and have some type of optimism you know they haven't looked all that incredibly dominant the last few games and arsenal whatever happened in dubai it's just recharged their batteries and they haven't just beaten teams they've actually dominated teams so it's a lot of encouraging stats to look at danny and it's really difficult to keep your um your hopes in check. I'm going to say, uh, you know, it's always the hopes that kills you when it, when it revolving sports. So here we are just kind of hoping for something epic. you know, I would just get discussing with you prior to the podcast starting that Manchester City has not lost at home since late 2022. They haven't mm-hmm. failed. They've failed to score. The last time they failed to score was late 2021. So still no pushover, you know, whatever, you know, mode of manchester city that you could think of and you could look at them and say hey maybe they're a little weak they're still a force to be reckoned with at home another interesting stat that i dug up by accident was they haven't lost at home since 2018 which you know future casting a potential semi-final versus them my goodness um what an uphill battle so confident more confident than the last couple of years but definitely not not nervous i'll say that I'm just counting here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In for the last 40 home Premier League games, they've lost one. And that was a 2 1 loss to Brentford. They yeah, drew against Liverpool. They drew against Everton. Then again, they've drawn four out of their last nine. They drew against Palace, Spurs, Liverpool, and Chelsea. And they only beat Brentford 1 0. So there is there is a chance there. They're not exactly the team that, that they were last season, dominating with Haaland, banging in hat-tricks and back-to-back-to-back games. But um, we've got some predictions coming in the chat there. We've only got uh, six, seven predictions, people. We need more predictions. Russ? Oh, Russ has put his one in there. Who has it? Uh, Melina has. Um, you, you haven't done your one, but I'll come to yours in a minute. Um, uh, Nitsu, I don't think you've put your one in there, have you? Ah, uh, oh, Paul Nell's here, not Neil. Uh, need a prediction off you, Paul. And uh, Nitsu, if you're still here. Uh, had Matt. Oh, yeah, Matt's there too. Okay. Oh, you people drive me nuts. 2-1 to the good, Paul. 
oh, makes it so much harder for my rag, rag, raggled old brain to to get that the right way around. But Horrible. I'll give it a go. I, I'm nothing if not determined. Uh, Paul says it's always good to see you. Isn't that isn't that nice of him? So nice. Yes, and uh, Tony is saying hello to uh, to people as well. Now then, if we have a little look at the lineups, uh, what ones have we got? Let's have a look. I've only got three that I keep here. Are we going to go? That's it's going to be the same back five all the time. Um, do you think he is going to bring Zinchenko in, considering Kivior has had such a great time at centre uh, left left back? No, I'm a big believer on the whole match fitness thing mattering a lot to to Mikel Arteta. So it, for the same reason, I don't think Partey is going to drop in. But let me get to the Partey thing. Let me expand on that a little bit. Cool. I was pleasantly surprised to see that he got minutes during QPR, where you know, granted they lost four zero, but it was Tamiyasu and Partey getting valuable fitness minutes, and I do think that that plays a part in the potential selection. But um, yeah, I don't. I just, I feel like it would be drastic. But Danny Partey was in that lineup when we when we managed to beat them and for for the Community Shield, if my memory serves me correctly. And what I've been waiting for the entirety of the the whole season was Partey at the base, Trossard on the left eight, or sorry, um, Rice at left eight and Udegar on the right. So fitting in Partey would be. An absolute surprise. I don't think it's going to happen, but I, I think it is going to be Jorginho playing deep because thus far he's played most of our biggest games of every season. It's, he seems to have all the the know-how, the wits, the dark arts. You know, he's composed. He knows how to cut through lines. So I think he's an excellent player to have at the base. So you are going to go for Jorginho in the holding defensive midfield role. I take it you're going to go for Rice and Erdogan next to him. Now, Martinelli coming back from an injury, or are you going to pick Trossard on the left wing? I'm thinking Trossard is going to be the player that starts. Mm. Yeah, Probably. just going back on my my whole theory of uh, match fitness and whatnot, I think he's going to be the guy that starts. And thus far, he's he's been good. He's a good substitute to have. Um, out of all the positions that Trossard ends up playing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the left wing is my my favorite because between left eight, false nine, striker, whatever you want to call it, and wing, I think he does well there. And he seems to be, you know, he's the grown-up of, of the thing, of the of the front three, where he's like not so much non, not so much fancy movement and whatnot, but he's very clinical and very um, potent in front of goal. So, yeah, I think Trust is going to get the nod. Uh, Paul Nell brings up a point here. Now that... Uh... Hey, who's the uh, striker is now back or hey, who's the forward? Do you think that uh, he says here curious if it would be hey, who's or little Gabby on the wing? Um, where, what is the future this season and oncoming seasons of future seasons for Jesus? Because he's shown he isn't the goal scorer that we need. He gets bullied when he's playing up front. He's constant knee injuries and ankle injuries and leg injuries. He is not suited for the rough and tumble up front. So do you think we're going to keep him and play him wide and he will come on for Saka or more likely for Martinelli? Has he got a future at the club or has he? is he going to be doing anything for the rest of this season? Because we've only got 10 league games to go. Uh, okay, First, addressing Gabriel Jesus on the left wing. I, I don't know if my perspective of him is not being explosive um, or willing to take on players with, with some speed. And, and maybe I have this like convoluted notion of what a winger should play or how they should play. There's something about Gabriel Martinelli, Gabriel Jesus on the flanks that I don't like. I know he's done it before, kind of like makeshift when he has to like get forced in there. But I, that's the last place I want to see him on the, on the pitch. I'm almost as I almost go full crazy with Mike McDonald to suggest that I would rather see him at left eight than as a wing or for us. But as far as the future holds for Gabriel Jesus, I think he's going to stick around at the club. Uh, there's a lot of love for him. He still provides a lot when he does manage to play. But unfortunately, thus far, his injuries have been proving that he might not be as reliable uh, of a player that we're expecting. Now, I think currently his head-to-head -head is Kai Havertz. On current form, I, I can't see Kai Havertz dropping back into the midfield, maybe in spe very specific occasions. But I just don't see how you drop Kai right now, uh, center forward. And, and Danny, I'll tell, I'll tell you this. I'm not right about a lot very often. 
Uh, as I like to say, I know shit about fuck. However, <laughs> Kai Havertz, when we signed him and they were promoting him as a midfielder, I just didn't understand it. I, I kept on thinking to myself, no, he's going to play in the front three. He's going to play in the front three. He's He, he can finish. Um, and I, I often joke around that his finishing often seems a little clumsier, but he just has a knack of being in the right place at the right time. So if it's up to me, I'm, I'm looking at Kai Havertz. He's going to continue to start on current form. He can't be dropped. Gabriel Jesus, I'm sure we'll get, we'll get game time. There's, you know, Champions League games out and a bunch of games coming up in a very congested calendar. But I think he sticks around, Danny. I think Gabriel Jesus, Kai, and potentially, I don't know, they keep on floating around the, the potential of signing a striker. But I'm one of those, like, Unpopular opinion, if you like, Danny. Uh, I would prioritize a midfielder and a right winger before we we bring in a striker. Um, I don't know the club finances. I don't know if they can bring in three players. I'm just, if I'm ranking who I want to bring in, it's a right midfielder for a right winger first, a midfielder second, and a striker third. I'd get Jesus out of the club as soon as possible. 26 games this season, eight goals, five assists, all competitions. Not good enough. He has missed 21 Premier League games in two seasons. Not good enough. This season, four goals in 19 Premier League games. Not good enough. Last season, 11 in 26 Premier League games. Barely good enough for the amount of money that he cost us. Um, <laughs> I think the days. Go on. Do, you, do you put any stock on the Champions League form thing? Because there, there's something unexplainable going on. I, I saw some stat floating around, and I might Four be and six. Yeah, I might be off a little bit, but I, I think it was like Gabriel Jesus in league, Gabriel Jesus versus Champions League, and like you said, four and six in Champions League, and four and twenty-one, I think, for in, in league. So. I can't explain to you the difference. Um, maybe you could make the argument that that teams in Europe play a little bit more, you know, expanded versus us and are willing to attack us. Any team that's not Porto, uh, but there's something about the Champions League, man. Like every time he plays, he 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 scores, or at the very least, he's a menace. So, uh, do you put any like stock in that, or you just think it's purely coincidental that he, he's managed to score at such a higher rate in the Champions League versus the league? Hmm, there is a question there. So looking at the stats, he's got, uh, it is odd, he's got four in six in the Champions League. He's got four in 19 in the Premier League. That does not make sense. And I do not know a reason why. Very there you nice. go. <laughs> if anyone has a reason to do, let us know. Uh, BX says Jesus has a role to play. People, any more? We have got nine predictions so far. Your predictions will be going on a YouTube um a YouTube is it reels and an, in, uh, an in Instagram one, and we're on Twitter, we're on TikTok now. One of our TikToks got 365 views, the rest of them all got one. Yeah, I, I fell asleep, I fell asleep watching that one, Danny, and that explains that it's only 32 seconds long, so uh, that doesn't say very much about your ability to stay uh, awake when you are well, working all the hours that there are in, in, in the world. So true. So if you are on TikTok. Go and have a look for a ah, underscore Bergkamp underscore Wonderland. Unfortunately, um, some people have followed us, and I've only got the desktop app, so I will not have TikTok on my phone because those little those little buggers, they'll get in my phone and they'll winkle out all my information. I'm not having it. So the three people that have followed, that have followed us, um, Matt Roberts, um, Danny, and uh, someone called Sean. I've tried to click and follow back doesn't let me so we're not ignoring you but if you are on tiktok go and have a look you might go oh that was that was possibly the best 35 seconds i have spent in in quite a considerable length of time uh 315 views it got not 365 talking nonsense again so we will be putting that all your um predictions in here so then we will uh yeah, that'll be good. We can laugh at you tomorrow when we get them all completely and utterly wrong. Anything else we want to talk about, Mike, before we uh, go on to the predictions and end this wonderful show of me eating chocolate and listening to you saying wise things? Wise things. Uh, that's very kind of you. I'm just going to say that um, I think it's important for our season that we manage to, even if it's a draw, it's important, I believe, to get out of the Eddie head with some face, like not be completely dominated. And this is the first time in a very long time 
that I'm feeling confident that they won't overrun us. Like they, they won't humiliate us like Brentford humiliated Manchester United today. In case you didn't know, Danny, um, United managed to concede 31 shots versus Brentford. They no, had, I had no idea. I know yeah, I, I think you were sleeping. Like, they managed yeah. to go. Go look at the stats. You you you've been talking about stats. You have yourself a good laugh. The XG is ridiculous. Thirty one shots conceded versus them. And after the presser that Ten Hand came up with, is City also struggled versus Brentford. So um, their state, their their club is is wobbly and a little crazy to say the least. But getting back to the Arsenal, I think it's really important to make a massive statement and this might be unpopular in a very short term type of news thing in twitters because everybody likes to overreact i don't think a loss at the head he had tomorrow equals arsenal cannot win the league yeah that is uh i don't we shouldn't be losing anyway this is a game that we should be going to and the stats say we can win it. We've beaten them twice this season. Beat them in the league at home. We beat them in the Charity Shield. I will not have anybody say anything negative about the Charity Shield because uh, it's one more trophy that Spurs haven't won and they're never going to get anywhere near because you have to be a winner to be in a, a, a competition like that. There's only two teams in it, but uh, it's, uh, I still take it. Uh, Lone Star Londoner says, Man United have faced more shots in the Premier League this season, 498, than Man City and Arsenal have combined, 464. <laughs> that is brilliant. Uh, oh, Sorry. and uh, Paul says he'll catch us tomorrow. Deke isn't on tomorrow. Deke is working, and so he won't be able to watch the game, and then he's off to, to have a little bit of time off. Uh, so it is our very own Femi. He will be joining us about a quarter of an hour after the game. Me and Femi having a chit chat. So it should be good. Um, yeah, so that's it. Right. It's your last chance, people. You've got 30 seconds to get your predictions in the chat if you haven't already done it. Every single one that you have done, I have got. So I've got uh, Melina, Phil, Russ, Lone Star, the Matt Hatter, BX, Tony, uh, Paul, and the Englishman in Canada. I've got nine predictions at the moment. It says here that there is 136 of you watching on Twitter. There isn't. There's probably two. And, uh, yeah, oh, if anybody wow. hasn't done it, hey. I said I'll allow it. We're we're going with that number, Danny. You know what's the fun part is I actually stream to both my personal and the podcast account, so my yeah. numbers look tremendous. I mean, uh, so be double. So if we we're at one sixty two on Twitter, I'd be at what three something. So nearly well, four four hundred something. So I I, li I like that maths, if you will. Right, I'm gonna do the predictions, and when I'm finished reading that predictions, Mike, I need you to quickly and concisely give me your prediction and nothing else because this needs to be done in 45 seconds. And you know me with saying words, I will muck them up. And so, uh, the little bit of silence before I do it, and a little bit of silence after, and then uh, I will use that, I will cut that as a clip. So, <laughs> here we go. Predictions for Manchester City v Arsenal on Sunday in the Premier League. Miss Molina has gone 2-1 the Arsenal. Phil Macca, 3-0 the Arsenal. Russ Morgan has gone 1-1. Lone Star Londoner has gone 1-0 Arsenal. The Matt Hatter, 2-1 Arsenal. BX Gunner has gone 3-1 the Arsenal. Tony Anastasi has gone 2-2 with Saka score draw. Would probably take it. I've gone too far with that. Paul Neal has gone 2-1 the Arsenal. Englishman in Canada has gone 2-1 the Arsenal. Mike, what are you going for? I'm going with Manchester City 2, Arsenal 2. I'm going for Man City 1, Arsenal 1. And there you go. Lovely. Good luck, everybody. And there you go. That's it. I will go and cut that later. And tomorrow, if you lot remind me, I will play it during the show. If you don't remind me, we won't do it because I have a, a memory like a sieve because, quite frankly, I'm very, very old. BX says it's uh, three points to the Gunners. Russ says, pray silence, please, for the Electric Light Orchestra. Hello. Hello. Phil says, I dare you to say boo halfway through, Mike. Too late. Spurs won the title in August Cup, of course. Yes, he did. With their wonderful fake Australian manager. He's not even Australian. He did the first three games of the season. 
quite accomplishment. Uh, Lone Star says, uh, these two sitting on the fence. I was going to go 1-0 Man City win, but I didn't want to be negative on Easter Sunday because uh, Baby Jesus <laughs> wouldn't like that. And nor would any of the Jesuses that play for the Arsenal. It, and and I don't want to be clipped as the guy that was too overconfident. So, like, you know how they do those YouTuber compilations after a loss or something? They're like, yeah. oh, this deluded guy said... I don't want to be that guy, Lone Star. So I play defense when it comes to these predictions. So I'm ninety percent of the time, I'm going for a draw. Good. Right, that's it. We said it would be half an hour. We've done thirty-five minutes. That is the the shortest overrun Mister Hertz has ever done in his long and distinguished podcasting career. So well done to you and uh, to everybody watching. So Mike, uh, tell these lovely listeners where they can find you and your cohorts. Of, uh, of doom and destruction. I don't know why I said that. That's just the words that come in my head. I can't help it. <laughs> you could find him very seldomly and very sporadically on the Gooners podcast with uh, Magic Mike, Andy, Owen, Asin, and Jared Carver, who is every every podcaster's favorite podcaster. Uh, I have a podcast of my own that I host it's called Not Another Arsenal Podcast every Tuesday night, every Wednesday morning, I guess, for the UK listeners. Um, we're back. We, if you go over there and if you enter on and decide to like, subscribe, something, something in that nature, uh, don't worry about the the lack of videos. As I said earlier in the podcast, we don't do a whole lot during international break because, quite frankly, I don't like international break. So, what we will be back one hundred percent Tuesday to review the Manchester City versus Arsenal game, and we are hoping for the best. Oh. Lovely and jubbly. Right, people, we'll be back quarter of an hour after tomorrow afternoon, evening, mornings game, depending on where in the world that you are. Thank you very much for watching. And here, have an outro. Should we have Steve and Dave, or do we should tease it and go Anfield 89? I like Anfield 89, Danny. We need the motivation. We're sitting on the fence, so you got to tell Lone Star. you got to show Lone Star that we're not sitting on the fence. You hairy little tease, you. Well, here it is. Goodbye. Out it goes to Lee Dixon. Long ball from Lee Dixon. Smith will hold it up. Plays it square to Thomas. And Thomas has goes inside Nickel. And Thomas is there. And Thomas has scored for Arsenal. In injury time, Michael Thomas has scored for Arsenal. A ball played through the gap. Thomas was there. He held off two challenges. Kept his head by my watch. We are a minute and a half into injury time and Michael Thomas may have won the championship.